So much has happened since launch. NES and SNES games, Nintendo Switch Online, a new offshoot console, special editions, the dock controversy, and a massive outpouring of third-party support. The ecosystem has changed, but the core selling point is still largely the same. You get a Nintendo Switch to play all of the great first-party titles and for a versatile gaming experience so you can play your games however you want, wherever you want. So, three years in, what has changed for better or for worse? And is it still worth it for you late adopters out there, especially with some new consoles on the horizon? It's been three years since the launch of the Nintendo Switch, but it's been two years since the launch of Satisfy's Kickstarter, the sponsor of this video. In celebration, they're selling their Switch grip for just 22 bucks, which is the cheapest it's ever been since launch. And if you use the code WOLF, you get another 10% off. If you've been wanting to pull the trigger on one of these grips so your wrists don't fall off, this is the time to do it. You could also get their Switch Lite Slim Bundle for just 36 bucks, which includes the ergonomic grip and a case to throw it all in. Switch Grip Bundles are up to 35% off as well. Check it out at the link in the description below before supplies run out, or just go to satisfied.com, but make sure you use the code WOLF, spelt like that, to get an additional 10% off, and how the hell else are they gonna know that I sent you? Remember when the Nintendo Switch came out and there were only 12 launch titles and only six of them had physical releases? Well now, according to Wikipedia, there are 2,105 Nintendo Switch games. Actually, that was as of three days ago, hold on. There are 2,126 games, see it keeps on going. That doesn't mean that they're all good games. The eShop is kind of a minefield of shovelware indie games. I like the fact that Nintendo has opened the floodgates and is pretty much letting anybody develop for the Switch. There's just no curation or hierarchy when browsing the eShop. Don't go to the eShop for game recommendations. There are plenty of resources on the internet that will point you in the right direction when you're looking for something new to play. I usually do a sort of what's on my Switch in these types of videos so that you can see exactly what I've been playing throughout my Switch journey but there's just so much crap on there now and I hardly ever play any of them. I'll put them on screen anyway. The big players are Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and Super Mario Maker 2. That sums up most of my Switch usage. There's also Pokemon Sword, which deserves to be up there as one of the best Switch games. I just recently got past the end game, so it is yet to be determined how much I'll keep doing raid battles or if I'll do the battle tower some more or if I'll go for the shiny charm but I'll for sure be opening the game back up when the DLC launches later this year. I'm not a huge fan of Mario Kart, but it's most people's go-to party game. It's familiar territory for most people, so it gets a lot of playtime on my Switch. But I've had some luck turning people on to Duck Game instead, which is way more of a hectic kind of fun. Right now, the Switch library is vast and deep. Those were the games that I spent the most time on recently, but that doesn't mean I didn't have my fun with games like Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey. Those are still two of the best games on the Nintendo Switch. It's just that I haven't really touched them that much in years. The same goes for the new big stuff that came out this year, like Luigi's Mansion 3, Astral Chain, and Link's Awakening. All great games. I just kind of dipped in and dipped out of those because they were getting in the way of my Smash Brothers, Mario Maker, and Pokemon playtime. And yeah, I'm sure Fire Emblem is good too. There's also a lot of great third-party support. Now that the Switch has proven itself as a success, publishers are more willing to dump some resources into developing for it. Despite what you might have heard when it launched, Overwatch runs great on the Switch. There was maybe one time while I was playing where characters took an extra few seconds to appear on screen, but it was before a match started, and it was the very first time I booted it up. Sure, the frame rate isn't 144 hertz like it is on your gaming PC, but that's not why you would ever want to play a game on this thing. You're playing on your Switch for one of two reasons. One, you want to be able to play portably. 
either on a commute or over at a friend's house or hell, even at work if you can get away with it. Or two, you only have a Nintendo Switch. Maybe you decided to purchase that over other consoles or even a gaming PC because you can get the most versatile gaming experience that way, which is fine. Personally, before the Switch came out, I was expecting it to be the perfect ancillary console. It would be a perfect complement to my PS4. I'd get to play all of the great Nintendo first party stuff and I'd be able to take some great third party stuff with me on the go. I was really hoping for that great indie support, just like my Vita had, and the Switch has that in spades. However, the Switch very quickly became my primary console. I hardly ever play my PS4 or my Xbox One anymore. I can never tell that the resolution or frame rate is compromised when I'm playing third party stuff. The convenience of having the option to take my games with me is worth way more than a few pixels. If a game's good, it's good, whether that be at 240p or 1080p. Now, there was a pretty big development last year. There was the Switch Lite, an offshoot console of the Switch that is more portable, but cannot be docked. It's also $100 cheaper. This is the perfect device for anyone who's planning on playing entirely in portable mode, which is how about half my friends play their Switch anyway. It also has an actual D-pad, which I'm all for, of course. In my opinion, it's more comfortable to play than a regular Switch, although a satisfied grip will solve all of those problems. Link in the description below. There was also a stealth upgrade to the original Switch. The base model now has almost double the battery life. It's also said that the screen is slightly different. It's not really an upgrade, it's just different. I never got this upgraded model. I like my launch Switch just fine. Personally, I find that I almost exclusively play my Switch in docked mode. It seems like one of those things where I just like having the option of having all of my games with me, but I rarely ever pull my Switch out of the bag and actually play it. It's kind of just nice knowing it's all there. I buy all my games digitally just so I can always have them with me. I currently have a nice big fat 400 gigabyte card in my regular Switch. This complicates things a little bit. You see, this past year, I planned on using my Switch Lite as my go-to portable Switch. I have all my games digitally, so having my games on both consoles is nice. However, not every game supports cloud saves, and the ones that do still can have save file conflicts. So before I leave the house, if I know there's a game that I want to play, I always have to make sure I have the save file downloaded. In some cases, if I'm in a hurry, it would be more convenient for me to just take my regular Switch with me. However, it's set up as my secondary Switch, which means it requires internet in order to play any of the digital purchases, which is all of my games. This means that I can't play any of my games on my original Switch without internet. This whole thing has become increasingly frustrating the more I encounter it. In some cases, it makes me just abstain from pulling my Switch out of my bag because I'm afraid of the potential of a cloud save conflict. This is something that Nintendo said that they would have a solution for, but it's been a while since they've said that and it doesn't look like they're gonna be holding up that promise anytime soon. Nintendo Switch Online is still kind of a hot mess. Honestly, it's not too bad in Smash Brothers. Lag does happen and it happens more often in private matches than it does in quick play leading me to believe the matchmaking actually takes geography and ping into consideration, or it just matches you against other players who have good internet. However, Mario Maker's multiplayer is just straight up broken. When I was making that video on the lag in Nintendo Switch Online, it actually took me a while to find lag in Smash Bros. Ultimate Quick Play, and I only found it in a four-player match, but I found it in Mario Maker on the very first game that I joined, and my god, it was like a goddamn PowerPoint presentation. Very few games actually use the Nintendo Switch Online app for voice chat. Most just use the headset, but Nintendo still has yet to conform. Animal Crossing will be using the app for voice chat, unfortunately. Another source subject with Nintendo Switch Online are the NES and SNES games for some reason. People are mad that this took the place of the virtual console. They'd rather buy a lot of these games individually instead of getting the whole lot included with the service. They both launched with great games on them already. And there have been some pretty neat drops, 
but lately the drops have been less and less frequent and when we do get a drop of new retro games, it's very unsatisfying. Like, I'm sorry, but who the hell cares about Smash Tennis when we already have two tennis games? Three if you also have the Super Famicom games. How much different can 2D Tennis be? Part of the problem is that we already have a lot of great retro stuff from third-party companies on the Switch, like the Mega Man Legacy Collection, Collection of Mana, Capcom Beat-em-Up Bundle, the Konami Collections, and I'll toss the Sega Genesis Collection in there just because it's a great collection. So it makes sense why these third-party companies wouldn't want to include their games in the Nintendo Switch Online Collection because they already have their own collections. I'm just hoping we get some Game Boy games included later this year. I think that will be way more likely than getting N64 games. So that's about where I stand with the Nintendo Switch. I've been very much enjoying my experience. It's not perfect, but I've been spending a lot of time with it. It very quickly became my favorite console and I'm definitely getting a lot of bang for my buck. But is it still worth it in 2020, three years after it came out? The only new first party game that we know for sure is coming out this year is Animal Crossing, and that's coming out in March. The sequel to Breath of the Wild could come out later this year, but it's not confirmed and Zelda games always get delayed anyway. So the end of the year has a big fat question mark on it. But just because there's a drought in first party titles does not mean that there's a drought in third party titles. There's plenty of great third party and indie games that are coming out this year. And there's definitely more Nintendo games coming out this year. We just don't know what they are yet. Nintendo's being very coy about it. There's also two brand new next generation consoles coming out later this year, which might make the decision harder for some. Let's just do a little thought experiment. Let's just assume for a second that Nintendo doesn't come out with any more games this year after Animal Crossing. That's not gonna happen, but let's just assume that it does. The back catalog on the Nintendo Switch more than makes up for it. If you buy a Switch right now, you need to play Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey and Pokemon Sword. Hell, I'd throw Celeste and Katana Zero in there. And you'd probably end up getting Mario Kart because everybody does. That's so much to play already. If you want to take a dive into the back catalog, then yes, it's 100% worth it. If the choice is between, let's say, the Nintendo Switch or the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, I think that's a pretty unfair fight. That's apples to oranges. Again, you get a Nintendo Switch for the great Nintendo first party titles and for the versatility and portability. You get a PS5 or an Xbox Series X for their exclusive first party games or for their 4K 60 frames per second power. They serve completely different use cases. If you're worried about getting a Nintendo Switch because there's a Switch Pro looming on the horizon, you can friggin' forget it. I don't think that's happening anytime soon. Honestly, because of that huge back catalog you've been missing out on, any time is a great time to buy a Switch. I'm still having a ton of fun spending hundreds of hours in Smash Brothers and Mario Maker, and I'm still taking the damn thing with me everywhere I go, despite the fact I'll probably just sit on my phone when I'm on the train. I've used my Switch probably more than any device I own besides my computer, and that shows no signs of stopping anytime soon, despite the game drought. So stop being a bitch and just get one already. Hey, if you ever wanna see a little behind the scenes of these videos, you can go over to my second channel. I just dropped the video finally, where I do a little tour of like my home office and the rest of the apartment and what the, the sets look like. It's just my apartment. This is all just my apartment. So head over there and it's a fun little quick video that I did and I hope to do more like it very soon and subscribe to the Bob Wolf channel, yay. And if you're wondering why we're doing this video now when the anniversary of the Switch is next week, it's because this weekend I'll be at PAX East. I hope to see you there and if I see you there, come, come say hi. But also I'm gonna have a video next week of all of the cool stuff that I see at PAX East. So I didn't wanna Take, I didn't want to post two videos because that's too much work and I didn't want to take up the time, you know, so this, you're getting this now. My schedule at PAX looks like this. On Thursday, we'll be streaming on Twitch at 4 p.m. So go to twitch.tv slash wolfden and turn on notifications then you'll see us live streaming from PAX. And then if you want to meet me, why, why would you want to? 
You can do that on Sunday at noon at the ScreenWave booth. I'll be over there hanging out and you can come say hi, get a picture, uh, I'll give you a sticker and I'll sign your whatever's appropriate. But of course, we got new videos and live streams all the time. Our schedule's in a pin tweet over on Twitter. We got Wolf Den live every single Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time here on YouTube. That's our live podcast where we talk to you people. And the most important thing that you can do to help us out, especially if you're not going to PAX, is just like this video, subscribe to the channel, check out my new channel, and share this video with a friend, a friend who hasn't gotten a Switch yet. What a, what a dummy, right? Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a good week. I love you, bye. bye.